Hey, my name is Mike, and this is a too long, didn't read guide for Return to Karazhan. This is a mythic only dungeon. There's three different opera events that you can have, the first one being Wicket. These two bosses share a health pool. When Galander does Magic Magnificent, make sure to stand in the purple tornadoes that are spawned by Elfira. Don't stand in these void zones spawned in the tank. Try to interrupt as many dreary bolts on Elfira and as many flashy bolts on Galander. Kill the ads. The second opera event you can get is Westfall Story. The fight starts with Tony and a few gang ruffians. Don't stand in Tony's orange circle. He'll also charge around leaving fiery tornadoes in his path. Kill off the ruffians quickly. They'll teleport to a random player and put a dot on them. When Tony gets around 40%, phase 2 starts. In this phase when Murgria puts a blue circle on everyone, spread out. Kill the shoreline tide speakers quickly and make sure to interrupt Bubble Blast. If you can't interrupt it, avoid the orbs. Avoid the blue waves coming from both sides of the room. At around 50%, phase 3 starts. Phase 3 is Tony and Murgia together, so it's blue and orange circles, the waves, and fires. The last opera event you can get is Beautiful Beast. You start off fighting three adds, Bablet, Luminor, and Cauldrons. When you kill one of them, the other ones that are alive will get healed to full and get a permanent stacking 25% damage buff. Bablet fixates a target and blinds them for 4 seconds when it reaches them. If it runs through a fire, it'll run faster. Luminor is the one who spawns fires with Burning Blaze. Make sure to interrupt Heat Wave because it does AoE damage. Mrs. Cauldrons also has an AoE knockback called Leftovers that you can interrupt. If not, just don't stand in this green circle. Soup Spray puts a debuff on you that reduces your movement speed, but this debuff can remove the fire patches. After you kill those three, you'll fight Cogleston. He spawns adds that put dots on people and also leap to a random location in Whirlwind for 4 seconds. Make sure to interrupt Dinner Bell because it buffs the adds, and he'll put an 8 second debuff on the tank that increases the damage they take by 50%. Stay spread out 6 yards on Maiden of Virtue. Make sure to interrupt Holy Shock every single time. If you get the Sacred Ground debuff, try to run to a wall. When this expires, it'll drop an expanding yellow circle on the ground. Mass Repentance will stun everyone. Before the boss finishes casting this, make sure to stand in Sacred Ground for at least one stack. This stack will do light damage from you and break you from the 30 second stun that is Mass Repentance. If you don't take damage while you're stunned, you'll be stunned for 30 seconds. Seconds. Right after Mass Repentance, she puts an Absorb on herself and casts Holy Wrath. Damage through the shield and interrupt Holy Wrath or else you'll wipe. A Tomb in the Huntsman will start the fight on Midnight. Mighty Stomp does damage and interrupts anyone within 30 yards. Everyone in the group will get a dot on them called Intangible Presence. Dispel the person that has a ghostly copy of their character copying all their moves. Dispelling this removes everyone's dot, but dispelling the wrong person will make everyone take a lot of damage. At 50% health, a Tomb in will jump off Midnight and Midnight will start to charge around the room while regenerating health. Do not stand in Mortal Strike. Do stand in Shared Suffering because it splits to damage. Avoid the wall of horses. When Midnight gets the full health, a Tumen will jump right back on her. The adds before Moros have a ghost trap near them that you can pick up. You can use this on the adds that are surrounding Moros. These will CC the adds around Moros for over a minute. There's a lot of different guests that you can have and they all buff each other when they're around each other. Baroness stuns a player and drains all their mana. Lady Catriana will heal the boss. Baron Rafe does a whirlwind. Lady Kira increases the boss's attack speed and damage. Lord Robin will throw a weapon at a random player that deals damage to anyone standing near it. And Lord Crispin does a frontal cone. When Moros gets to 60% health, he will break all the adds immunities, so you have to kill them before then. Ideally, you want to kill them off one by one. Throughout the fight, he will randomly vanish and then appear behind a random player, stunning them and applying a permanent dot on them. He also puts a debuff on the tank that reduces their armor by 75%. Kill the orbs that Curator spawns. Do not stand in the swirlies or the blue puddles that they spawn. These swirlies will spawn on players, so make sure you're not in a bad spot. At zero mana, the boss will do evocation for 10 seconds. He takes more damage while he channels this, and when he's done, he does a party-wide AoE that does more damage each time he does this. Nightbane is a boss that you have to summon within a certain amount of time, and if you you want to know how to do that, just click the box on the screen. This boss has a frontal cone and tail swipe. He'll put a fire underneath a random range DPS or healer, so move out of this. And make sure you're standing on the edge of the platform so it doesn't spawn in the middle. Interrupt reverberating shadows. Ignite Soul is a 9 second debuff put on a random player. When it expires, it deals party wide damage. The less health you have, the less damage it deals, so step into a fire until you're at about 20% health. 5 stacks of burning bones will be put on a random person. This can be dispelled, but for each stack, an ad will spawn. These ads will put a short stacking debuff on people that increases your damage taken by 25%. At 50%, Nightbane will fly up. Everything from the ground phase continues except, of course, the frontal cone and the tail swipe. You'll spawn an ad called Bone Curse who puts a stacking permanent dot and movement speed decrease on the group every 8 seconds. When you kill this ad, Nightbane will come back down and the fight continues as normal, except the boss now has a 3 second fear. The Shade of Mediv has 3 interruptible casts. Frostbite will permanently stun a player and put a dot on them. Piercing Missiles causes the tank to take extra damage for 20 seconds if the channel completes. And Infernal Bolt will put a red circle around a player and do damage to anyone inside of it as well as put a dot on that player. Ideally, you want to interrupt every single Frostbite and Piercing Missile. If a player gets stunned by frostbite, you can use the infernal bolt damage to free them. When the entire floor gets covered in ice, do not stop moving. Do not move into or out of this fiery circle called flame wreath. This will wipe you. When the boss splits up into three adds, just kill them all one by one. Try to kill them quickly because they do increasing party-wide AoE. You can also interrupt their arcane bolt cast. On the mana devourer, don't stand in the void zone. Energy discharge is a party-wide AoE. If the boss reaches 100 mana, he will one-shot you. The devourer will spawn purple
couple orbs that dump his mana. Once they're spawned, they'll start moving towards the boss, and if they reach him, they will regenerate his mana. Absorbing these will give you a stacking damage buff, but also a deadly dot. These purple pool tornado things around the room, you want to stand in these to reduce the amount of stacks you have. Ideally, you only want to be absorbing about two or three of these orbs. Interrupt Burning Blast on Visidoom the Watcher. If this green beam is fixating you, run it away from the party. If you get chaotic shadows, run away from the group. This can be dispelled. When this expires, everyone needs to dodge these spheres. Do not stand in green swirlies and do not stand in front of the boss during Disintegrate. At 66%, follow the boss through the portal. Don't get too close to these crystals. Once you reach him, the fight resumes. That fixating green beam will no longer happen, but now two people will get chaotic shadows. At 33%, follow him once again through the portal. On this ship, you have 30 seconds to get to him and interrupt him, or else he spawns a ton of ads. In the way of the boss, there is a few group of ads that need to be AoE'd down. In this last area, three people will now get chaotic shadows. Make sure to kill the ads. The sentry will put a stacking dot and movement speed decrease on the tank, and the spitter hits the tank and anyone within six yards of the tank. That was a too long didn't read guide for return to Karazhan. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching, and have a bodacious day.